Chris is screaming at me for the first time in our 14 month relationship. He just keeps saying, I knew you were one of them. I knew you were just a hippie liberal who hates the military. This is all Glenn Beck's fault. <laughs> I met Chris on a blind date, and all I really knew going in was that he was career military and pretty conservative. Being a liberal pacifist, my expectations were low. But then I walk through the door of this cheap Mexican restaurant, and I see this gorgeous specimen of masculinity. Camo, army fatigues, head to toe, combat boots. And even through the shapeless uniform, I could tell that he was tightly muscled ready to spring into action at any moment, <laughs> my expectations started to increase. And then over plates of tacos, he told me that he was former special forces, he traveled the world multiple times, he had two advanced degrees from Ivy League institutions. Hmm. Cute, smart, cultured, yeah. And then he tells me right now he's working in army intelligence at the Pentagon. And I was like, oh my god, I totally think he's James Bond. <laughs> Which is awesome, because I have this, always had this fantasy of being a Bond girl. I mean, they're like so independent and sexy and smart, and they're always having an adventure. Yeah. <laughs> All the guys I had met were boring and predictable. So far, Chris had been anything but predictable. So I decided I was going to channel Bond girls so I could exude this aura of sexual confidence. But Chris is funny and animated and he has this infectious laugh and before I know it, my feet are tucked up under me on the bench and I'm laughing too loud and I'm spilling food and I'm telling these stories about losing my car in a parking garage and almost getting arrested for expired tags and how I'm terrified of costumes and squirrels and. <laughs> and basically, I'm more Lucille Ball than Octopussy. And I say, I'm not usually like this, right? Which is a total lie, because I'm pretty much like always like that. <laughs> but I've never seen Lucy in a Bond movie. Chris laughs and he says, I think you're fantastic. I've never met anyone like you, and I can't wait to see you again. So it turns out he was more interested in being. Ricky to my Lucy, then Bond to my Honey Rider. But it seemed too good to be true, so a few weeks in I said, so, still got a thing for Lucy? He said, I adore you, and I cannot wait till the first time I get to bail you out of jail. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm wondering, how's that liberal brain of yours handling the fact that you're dating a conservative army guy? I was like, oh, no, the dating you actually makes me a better liberal because it proves how open and accepting I am of other <laughs> lifestyle choices. <laughs> Making fun of party stereotypes was our favorite pastime. Like, he'd come home at the end of the day and I'd be like, so how's your day? Invade any sovereign nations? <laughs> and he'd say, no. Oh, but I did deny someone their civil liberties. <laughs> And then we started having these really great intellectual, theoretical debates about military strategy and global policy. And somewhere in the middle of all that, we fell in love. And then I found out he was being deployed to Iraq. And all of a sudden, military strategy is not theoretical anymore, it's his life. And it took me about three months to notice the other changes. Like, he had no more sense of humor about anything. And his tolerance for Lucy had gone way down. Uh, like the third time that he said, would you quit worrying about me? You are in more trouble driving on the beltway than I am over here. I realized Ricky and Lucy are not going to survive this deployment. But Bond and Kissy Suzuki might. <laughs> So I decided I was just gonna look at this as one more adventure. I was gonna focus on the adrenaline rush I got when I heard from him, instead of the anxiety I got when I didn't. But as the desert continued to suck the normal out of him, he started to get more and more defensive and paranoid about my supposed liberal bias against the military. So to calm him down and show him, I decided to go deeper into the conservative heart of America. I started watching Fox News. <laughs> I um, uh, DVR'd um, The O'Reilly Factor. <laughs> I, I read Anne Coulter. And 
I have to I have to tell you, um, it was um, it was horrifying, frankly. Um, and uh, I think I I have PTSD from from the experience. Um, but at the time, it seemed a reasonable it seemed a reasonable sacrifice. Um, but pretty soon, there was very little in this relationship that was fun or romantic or fulfilling. Um, but he was very clear about the fact that knowing I was waiting for him was the only thing keeping him going at times. And so putting up with his mood swings and his conservative bullshit kind of became my contribution to the war effort. <laughs> you know, it wasn't so much about like being a good girlfriend, it was about being a good American. <laughs> and it would get really hard, I would just tell myself that whatever happens, I was not going to be one of those women subtly condemned in an NPR profile of women who dump their boyfriends while serving their country. And it was working. We were keeping it together until now. Now he's screaming at me about intellectual elitism and liberal codes. All because I just kind of said in passing, just threw it out that maybe, you know, Glenn Black Beck is like batshit crazy. <laughs> and he's freaking out. He says, well, what is it? Are you a liberal sheep or an independent thinker? And I'm, I'm thinking about everything that I've put into this relationship and I'm thinking about the fact that, that I do love him and you know, honestly, I'm already going to have to have part of my brain scraped to get rid of Rush Limbaugh's bile. And, you know, is one more concession really going to make that much of a difference? So I'm thinking, thinking about Glenn Beck, and I'm trying to think, you know, what I could say. Because all I need to do is agree with him, say something nice about Glenn Beck, and it's over. This fight is over. We can go back to normal. So finally I say, all right. Glenn Beck is an inspired entertainer feasting leech-like on the bloated corpse of rational thought. <laughs>